Okay, let's make a stormy tier list, shall we? I'll be ranking these 9 skills which are affected by items such as the Enraged Divine Beast Talisman or the Divine Beast Head. The criteria I'll be using are as follows. Effectiveness in invasions is how much damage it deals, does it have hyper armor, how fast it is, and etc. Skill ceiling refers to how likely it is for anyone to pick this up and be good with it. And counterplay refers to how easy it is for others to play around this skill. Let's start with Stormblade. Stormblade deals moderate damage but if you hit with both the blade and the projectile it will do considerably more. It is exceptionally good for pressuring opponents when they're trying to heal. And since its FP cost is very low you can use it frequently without investing any stat points into mind. It is also very good to interrupt spell casters and people that are just trying to run away from you. In one on ones it might not be very useful when the opponent already expects it and the timing is always the same so it's easy to roll if you spam it. In general this is a very good Ash of War to have in your builds. I do not consider it OP in any way but it is still very good. A tier for me. Storm Color can hit like a truck with the correct items and buffs. It has pretty good hyper armor with large weapons and it is exceptional against aggressive teams and gankers. The hard part is to set it up correctly since no one is going to just run to your storm color to get blendered if you use it too freely. It is also very easy to punish while you're locked into the animation and it's practically useless in 1v1s. It still has its place in builds however since one good storm color can pretty much win you any invasion Using Endure to tank is also incredibly effective to land the whole Ash of War. It can be A or B tier depending on your playstyle, but I find myself winning a lot of invasions with Stormcaller alone, so I'll give it an A tier. Thunderstorm? It is basically the same as Stormcaller except that it is tied to the Stormhawk Axe. This used to deal incredible amounts of damage, but since the very first DLC patch, its damage got nerfed to the ground, and now it's pretty shit. The weapon it is attached to, it is not very good either, so this is a C or D tier for me. I'll place it in C tier. Ice Storm is another AoE skill used to deal with packs of enemies and it is tied to the Samoa Curved Sword, which in itself is decent. The animation for Ice Storm is almost the same speed as Storm Color, and it can deal amazing amounts of damage. If you hit anyone with this, it will be a guaranteed frostbite proc. It has the same weaknesses mentioned before by Stormcaller and it is pretty much used in the same situations. In my opinion, I still prefer Stormcaller since I can put it on any weapon, but this is still an incredible option to deal with groups of enemies. A tier above Stormcaller. Horn Calling Storm is an Ash of War tied to the Horned Warrior's Greatsword which is a very good curved greatsword, its damage is pretty high. The skill however, not very great in my opinion, it is the same speed as storm color and ice storm but it only hits twice instead of three times. It also deals very little damage even when optimized and fully buffed. It does have a little bit more range than the other two but I don't think that makes up for the lack of damage and increased FP cost. I would place this in C tier, but the weapon this is attached to is very good and the Ash of War still can help get enemies off of you. So I will do B tier. Storm Assault can hit with both the startup AoE and the Trust. If you hit someone with both parts, you can deal really high damage. However, since it was nerfed, most times you will be poised broken out of the animation. You have to set this up correctly if you want to hit it. But in my opinion there are better Ashes of War that provide more hyper armor and will deal the same amount of damage to all enemies around you instead of just one. C tier, almost B tier for me. Storm Kick is a very hard skill to hit since it comes out very slowly and the animation is very easy to see. It deals decent damage and it does so in an area where you land so sometimes you can catch people off guard but in general you will find trouble landing this skill. The Veteran's Prosthesis, which is the weapon it is attached to, it is not very good either, so the Sash of War does not have much going for it. It is not completely useless though, so I will give it a D tier. Storm Stomp has a decent AoE and it guarantees a light attack hit on Colossal Swords. It comes out pretty fast and it grants a fair bit of hyper armor, 
It is exceptional if you like baiting enemies into trading with you, and it is fairly good as a wake up skill. But it's not meant for that, but for its trading potential. The wind it produces also lingers by a bit, so against aggressive melee players it is very good. It is useless however against ranged opponents, and if you spam it, it is very easy to roll. I do believe it has a high skill ceiling, since you have to know when and how to use it. All in all, it has its place with the right setup and build, and for that I'll give it a low B tier. Finally, Stormwall is not technically affected by any gear, since it's just a parry skill, but I'll rate it anyway. Out of the old parry skills, this one is middle of the road in the amount of parry frames it provides and how much recovery delay it has. The additional effect of blocking projectiles, I'll be honest, it is pretty useless in invasions since rolling will always be a better option. Because it is a parry skill, it has very high skill ceiling and missing the parry will make you take a lot of damage. It is still a very fancy looking parry, and if you land it, you could one-shot most phantoms. It's also very useful against specific types of weapons like spears or claws, so I'll give it a C tier. And that's it. In general, I like storm builds a lot, they're very balanced in my opinion. None of them are OP or completely useless, so they are always very fun to use. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with this tier list, and I hope you've at least found it entertaining. See you in the next one.